Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. And it is finally fall. It is absolutely one of my favorite seasons. Well, my favorite season. It's starting to cool down here in Texas. It's time for coffee and comfort food. And today we're making one of my very favorites. They're all my very favorites. And that is potato soup. So let's get started. Potato soup is really, really simple. It's simple, inexpensive comfort food. And I grew up on this. It was one of those things that we ate um, on busy weeknights or when we didn't feel good or just any time that we needed comfort food. A chilly night, any time. And all it is, some salt, some pepper to taste and I don't have that because we're gonna use the grinder for that. Um, I like to put a little garlic salt in mine but you certainly don't have to. I like to put a little green onion on floating on the top of mine um, but you don't have to do that either. Uh, onion, butter, heavy cream, and um, milk and I use evaporated milk because it makes it extra creamy and of course you know potatoes. I use thin skin potatoes. You can use russet potatoes any kind you want. If you use russet potatoes you're going to want to definitely uh, peel them. If you use a thin skin potato especially if it's like um, Yukon Gold or something like that you can just wash them really good and dice them. You don't really need to peel them. With a red skin potato, I like to go ahead and peel them because it looks kind of weird if you don't, but that's up to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to clear this off and we're going to get our potatoes peeled so that we can get those started because you're going and you're going to want a pound of potatoes. This will feed six people. I'm just going to peel these right over here. You may hear the dog, the dog's in the kitchen with me today, or one of them is the little dog. The little yappy dog is in the kitchen with me today. So it could get, I'll try to edit it out if she gets yappy. Once you get them peeled, you're gonna to wanna to cut it into a dice. Now, you can do this in a small dice or a large dice, just depending on what your preference is. Keep in mind that the smaller the dice, the quicker they'll cook. I like to have them just about that size. Um, they cook fast and it's still big enough, a big enough dice to be rustic. I don't want it to be too, too small. The amount of potatoes that you put in here is kind of up to you, whether you would like it to be, um, have more potatoes or less potatoes. You can put in a pound and a half of potatoes or you know a few less potatoes you know this is one of those soups that like my grandmother would just add an extra cup full of milk or a cup full of water or two to stretch it out if she needed to and um, you can do that too it's very forgiving it's delicious but you can definitely make it stretch to uh, if you need to unexpectedly set another place at the table, you can definitely make it stretch. My mom was always very careful to cut these little pieces out, the little eyes and things. I don't. Um, I just don't care that much. If you do, if you want to take the time to do that, go right ahead. I don't really care and my kids have grown up not knowing that people actually do take the time to cut that stuff out. So you know, that's just the way it is around here. I will never be a chef. I will never get a Michelin star. I will never be fancy. And that's okay. I've got my water boiling uh, or getting ready to boil on the stove. I've got it heating up. Hopefully it'll be boiling by the time I get this done. And um, I will drop the potatoes in there while uh, once I've got them all diced up. It shouldn't take maybe five to ten minutes for them to cook. 
And while they're cooking, what I'll be doing is cutting up the onions and sauteing them in a little bit of butter. And you'll see. I am using salted water. Um, the only time that I wouldn't use salted water when I'm cooking potatoes like this is if I'm um, going to use the potato water for bread later on and then I wouldn't salt it. But normally you're gonna to wanna to have your water salted. Okay. All right, we're gonna melt about one tablespoon of butter in the bottom of our stock pot where we're going to uh, make the soup. And y'all know I like to use this because it just makes it easier. You'll be doing this on your stove though. Now, when you saute your onions, you're not gonna want them to brown. You're going to want them to, you're just gonna sweat them. Um, you're gonna want them to get translucent, but you're gonna want them to stay white um, and clear. You want them to get clear. You're not gonna want them to caramelize. So this part is going to be done kind of on the slow side. You want all of the sweetness of the onion to come out and the flavor of the onion to come out, but you don't want any caramelization to really happen. And we're just going to saute those, and again, this would be quicker on your stove, but you want to do it slow enough that you're not actually um, caramelizing or frying the onions. You just want them to get soft and sweet. And you're going to do that until uh, until that happens, till they start to get translucent. So keep an eye on them. If you keep it moving around, once you start seeing it start to get translucent, and you're seeing some of these edges are starting to turn a little golden brown, that's when you want to make sure that you keep the onions moving around so that they don't get a chance to caramelize too, too much. You may want to turn your heat down as well. I don't have a lot of options for heat on this, so uh, I'm going to keep it moving around. If it was on the stove, um, I would turn the gas flame down to probably low at this point. All right, the potatoes are cooked. Our onions are nice and tender, and so we're going to add our potatoes to the pot. Stir that around. Add in the remaining three tablespoons of butter. We're almost there. I'm telling you, this is a quick, quick dinner. I'm going to add the milk. And like I said, I'm using evaporated milk because I think it makes it creamier. I'm going to add the cream. You don't have to add heavy cream. You can use half and half, or you can use all milk. You can use non-dairy, just whatever you like. The half and half or heavy cream does make it creamier, so keep that in mind. And then I'm going to give it a good stir. I'm going to add garlic powder because I like it in there. You don't have to add it if you don't like. And I'm going to add salt. And I'm going to start out with about a teaspoon of salt. And then after it's had a chance to simmer for a little bit, I'm going to taste it. I'll add more salt if I need it. Now, all we have to do is let that simmer for five minutes or so, because remember, everything is cooked now. It just needs to simmer to get the flavors together. Um, and then it's ready to ladle in your bowls. Now, here is the thing. Some people like a thicker soup. And with a lot of potato soups, um, the recipe will call for you to add cornstarch or to make a roux with flour. I think that gives it kind of a pasty flavor and I just don't like it. 
If you want your potato soup thicker, I'm going to show you how to do that. So hang on. Once your potato soup is done, if you decide that it is not thick enough for your liking, what I want you to do is go in there with a strainer and I want you to pull out some of the cooked potatoes and put them in your blender. And then go in there with um, a measuring cup. This is a half cup and pull out some of the liquid. about maybe half a cup, maybe a little bit more. And then we're gonna blend that together. Just until it's smooth and thick. And can you see how thick that is? We're gonna take that thick blended potato mixture that we've just created and we're gonna put it right back in, and I can't show you how I pour it in there uh, without making a mess. So I'm just going to, you're going to have to trust me that I'm putting it in there. I'm going to get as much, out of, as much of it out of here as I can. This has got all of the flavor of our potato soup in it, but it's nice and thick. And so it's going to thicken up our soup. Now we're just gonna stir that in. And that will have thickened up the soup quite a lot. And then if you wanna thicken it up some more, you can just do that again. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way you can do it is if you have some dried mashed potato flakes, you can add a few of those, uh, maybe a fourth of a cup, uh, a tablespoon at a time until you get the texture that you want. Be careful with that because you can get a really weird texture if you add too many. But that will thicken up your soup without giving it a weird texture too. But this is exactly how I like it. Nice and creamy with delicious potato flavor and I am ready to spoon it up into my bowl. All right? Here's our soup right in the bowl. So delicious and so yummy. Nice and creamy. So on my soup, the first thing that's going to happen is there's a pat of butter that's going to go on the top of it and start melting. And then some black pepper is going to go on top, which I know some people don't like to see the black pepper on top of the white soup, but I really like that. And then I am going to sprinkle on some green onions. And y'all, to me, this is the perfect bowl of potato soup. I told y'all that was easy. When it comes to quick and easy soup is it. I love the fall weather. I love when it gets chilly enough that, you know, we can put soup on the table and potato soup, I could literally eat it all season long, all year long, really. I hope that y'all are going to try this. I hope you'll love it. Don't forget to head over to the blog to get the nutrition information, the printable recipe, more tips, more recipes, more everything. Don't forget to come back next week. I love y'all. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to y'all later, okay? Love y'all. Bye-bye.